we're going to begin our discussion of genetics. So a great place to start is to discuss Gregor Mendel, who is considered to be the father of modern genetics. He was the first person to ever come up with the idea of a unit of um, transmissible in information from one generation to the next that would result in offspring that resemble their parents. So um, here are two slides that have the uh, the enduring understandings and the learning objectives for your AP biology curriculum. And, and here we go. So we need to understand what genetic principles are going to account for the passing of traits from our parents to offspring. Once upon a time, people had no idea how offspring looked like their parents. So this blending hypothesis is the idea that genetic material from both parents blends together, kind of like when you mix two paint colors. Um, there was another hypothesis proposed that said that there were discrete heritable units uh, that get passed on from parents to offspring, and this is called the particulate hypothesis, and we now know that those heritable units are actually genes. So the hypothesis, this particular hypothesis, particulate, this particular particulate hypothesis can explain the reappearance of traits after several generations, um, which is why, for example, um, a certain nose runs in a family or red hair skips a generation, for example or blonde hair or something like that. So Mendel documented a particulate mechanism through his experiment with garden peas. So 29,000 pea plants he ended up mating together and observing and making observations about them. So uh, he chose pea plants for a bunch of different reasons. So first of all, they have a bunch of different features which he referred to as characters or characteristics like flower color, and then each of those characters has a variation or a trait. So the character would be flower color, and the variation or the trait would be purple or white flowers, for example. He can control the mating between these two flowers, so it's working in a controlled environment, and each flower has uh, sperm producing organs and egg producing organs. So there's a male and a female type gamete that can come together. So cross-pollination, of course, I hope you remember, is when you get two different plants and uh, the gamete from one fertilizes the gamete with the other. And this can be accomplished by taking pollen from one flower and simply um, rubbing or wiping the pollen onto the carpal or the female portion of a, of a different flower. That's cross-pollinating. So essentially, that's what Mendel did. If you look up here, you can see he would cut off the, um, the, the reproductive parts of the flower here. Um, he would then use a paintbrush to transfer the male gamete, the pollen, to the female uh, reproductive structure here, or the carpal. And then eventually what would happen is the eggs within the ovary would be fertilized and you could then plant these these seeds and get flowers with a particular color. So um, you start with the parent generation, which is always referred to as the P generation, and the result of the cross between the parent generation uh, gives you your first generation, or we call it the F1 generation. Mendel chose to track only those characters that had two distinct alternative forms. Uh, this was this simplified the process for him, much like you choose to simplify an experiment by modifying only one variable at a time. Uh, that way he was able to get his data that he was able to analyze and make some, an, uh, make some sense of it when he was done. So he also used varieties that are true breeding plants. So plants that are true breeding are, are homozygous plants, or plants that produce offspring of the same variety when they're going, when they self-pollinate. Okay, so if pollen from a flower falls onto the, f the, um, the carpal of the female flower of the same flower and the result is a flower of the same color, that's when you have a true, bleeding, true breeding plant. So typically what Mendel would do is he would take two true breeding varieties that were different and he would mate them. And this is called hybridization because we're taking two, two 
true breeds and we are making a hybrid of them essentially so you've got your P generation which would be the true breeding plants and then the F1 generation would all be hybrid if you don't believe me you can do Punnett square so when the F1 generation self pollinate or cross pollinate with other F1 hybrids then the F2 generation is produced so Mendel would cross contrasting true breeding white and purple flowered pea plants and all of the F1 hybrids were purple okay so then when he took all of the purple F1 hybrids he would notice that most of the plants or many of the plants had purple flowers in the F2 generation but some of them still had white flowers he discovered that this always happened in a ratio of about three to one purple to white flowers in the F2 generation so notice here in the parent generation he has a purple flower and a white flower he crosses them to give you a purple flower in the F1 generation so all of the purple flowers in the F1 generation if they were to self pollinate or cross pollinate it didn't really matter uh, whatever his his results were would be roughly three to one ratio of purple to white flowers in the F2 generation so Mendel was curious as to why this was so he thought for whatever reason that only the purple flower factor was going to affect the flower color in the F1 hybrids so he called that purple flower color a dominant trait because when it was present it seemed to show up and he called this white flower color a recessive trait so um, he also noticed that the factor for white flowers was not diluted it wasn't destroyed it didn't get blended with a flower making a light purple flower because it would always reappear in the F2 generation so this particular trait of having a white flower color would skip a generation because you had it in the parent generation you did not have it in the F1 generation but then you would have it again in the F2 generation and he observed this pattern of inheritance in six other pea plant characters all of which were represented by two traits so um, what Mendel called a heritable factor is now what we call a gene so if we back up a little bit here you will see that um, when we were talking about these F1 and F2 generations um, yielding the F2 generations yielding the 3 to 1 flowers we're talking about it under the law of segregation so the law of segregation is Mendel's idea that there are somehow two existing um, factors heritable factors that will recombine or they will segregate in order to give us um, a different outcome and that's what he noticed so segregate or separate so if you look here uh, these represent all of the characters that he that Mendel looked at um, it he determined which trait was dominant he determined which trait was recessive and regardless of how many times he would do these particular crosses what he found out is that they are more or less always present into in a three to one ratio if you look here obviously it's not always going to be exactly a three to one ratio because not nece it's not necessarily true that every single pollen grain will fertilize every single egg um, and there are some other factors to consider but he was comfortable in saying that there was this three to one ratio in the F2 generation so he developed a hypothesis to explain this three to one inheritance impact inheritance pattern that he found in the F2 generation and there are four concepts that kind of make up the model of his hypothesis here and they can be related to what we know about genes and chromosomes so the first thing he said excuse me is that there are alternative versions of genes that are going to account for variations in inherited characters so excuse me so he was talking about the gene for flower color for example so there were two versions purple and white and we now call those alleles we refer to those as alleles those are the versions of the gene and each gene is going to reside at a specific locus or location or place on a specific chromosome so if you look here's the chromosome and here's the specific locus or the specific place for flower color and since this flower color here is for purple flowers and this variation here is for white flowers these are two separate alleles and these two chromosomes here if you recall are homologous chromosomes meaning they code for the same 
traits or the same alleles. They carry the same alleles. Um, and we typically think of these as one coming from the father and one coming from the mother to recombine to give us a complete set of chromosomes. Secondly, uh, for each character, an organism is going to get two alleles, one from each parent, just like we had mentioned. And Mendel made this deduction without knowing about chromosomes. He just figured it out kind of on his own. And two alleles at any particular locus can be identical or they could differ. Um, and they would be identical whenever we had the P generation with the purple and the white flowers and when the flowers were purple in the F1 generation they were not identical. Thirdly, if the two alleles at a locus differ, then the dominant allele is going to determine the organism's appearance. The recessive allele is not going to have a noticeable effect on the appearance. So again, in our F1 generation, we had purple flowers because the allele for purple flowers is the dominant trait. Fourth, now, fourthly, we talk about this now as the law of segregation tells us that two alleles for a heritable character are going to separate during gamete formation and they will end up in different gametes. So an egg or a sperm only gets one of the two alleles that an organism has. And then when they come back together, we now have a complete set, um, like for each species number. So the segregation of alleles is going to correspond to the distribution of homologous chromosomes uh, to different gametes in meiosis. So this model, the segregation model that Mendel came up with, is what's going to account for this 3 to 1 ratio that he observed in his F2 generation. And we can predict the possible combinations of a sperm and an egg using a Punnett square. And you all remember what that is. So we use capital letters to represent dominant traits. We use lowercase letters to represent recessive traits. Um, so I'm not going to spend much time going over this, but please look over it. If you need any more help with Punnett squares, please let me know. All right, so we always throw in these genetic words that are pretty important when we are describing, um, when we are describing the geti genetic makeup of an individual. So if the alleles are identical, then we say the character is homozygous for the gene that controls it. And if the alleles are different, then it's heterozygous. So remember, homo means same, hetero means different. And homozygotes are the true breeding characters and heterozygotes are not. And because of the way that dominant and recessive alleles work together or interact, it's not always apparent what the combination, what the allele combination is. So we distinguish between the allele combination and the physical appearance with the words phenotype and genotype. So phenotype begins with the letters PH, which the phenotype is the physical appearance of an organism, and genotype is the genetic makeup. Both of those words start with G-E-N, which is the root of the word gene. So your genotype is going to be the actual combination of alleles. So if you had a plant that had capital P, capital P, that is going to have the same phenotype as a plant that had capital P lowercase p, but obviously their genotypes are different, even though they were both produce purple flowers. This is exactly what it was that we were looking at here. Here's a, a picture of it. If an, if an individual has a dominant phenotype, we can determine the genotype of that individual by doing what we call a test cross. And a test cross is when we take a mystery individual and we breed it with a homozygous recessive individual. So if any offspring display the recessive phenotype, then we know that the mystery parent must be heterozygous. And this is called a test cross. So if this one, I if this flower is purple and we're not sure if it's homozygous or heterozygous, if we breed it with a recessive flower, which is the white flower here, um, then we can determine based on the offspring which, which phenotype belongs to our purple flower.